These are five high income AI automation skills that you can learn in 2025. My name is Jack. I make over six figures a month with AI. I have the largest paid top rated AI automations community on the planet. And I've spent the last almost year now traveling the world, shaking hands, kissing babies, and meeting people who are absolutely crushing it in these verticals. In this video, I wanna show you four really easy to understand verticals that you can use to either make an income with AI or start a fabulous, very rewarding journey. And at the end, I'm gonna bring in the fifth skill, which if you don't have, you're going to struggle to make any of these work to their full extent. So if you haven't already, grab that coffee and let's dive in with skill number one, which is the AI agency. What do we mean when we say AI agency? The actual expression AI automation agency was coined by Lee Marley a couple of years ago, and it's funny how it spread. So don't get too pulled off on the name, but here's the TLDR of it, okay? It's basically selling an automation, either for an upfront fee or for a recurring revenue model that basically solves a bit of problem for a business. Could be small business, could be significantly large. But I kind of want to take this vertical a step further. You'll see many videos focused on creating an agency, but what I think is often neglected is it's actually only one of multiple ways that you can make money. And within an AI agency model, there are so many other things you could be doing. For example, the first distinction I want to make between an AI automation agency is the specialist and generalist, and you will not find this distinction online. And the reason for that is because the AI automation agency, the model is very embryonic at the moment. And to contextualize this for you, I wanted to grab the screenshot from a guy called Andrew Ng. He did a really cool keynote uh, for Snowflake Inc. Very, very interesting about where AI is sitting. But for your purposes and the co this conversation we're having here is the question at the moment is where is the value being created in the kind of value stack of AI, right? At the bottom, we have these semiconductors, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, cloud infrastructure foundation models. And then applications is essentially what we mean when we're talking about AI automation agencies, SaaSes, lots of other technologies. I wanna draw your attention here to this thing here on agentic orchestration layer. The TLDR of that video and some of the videos around it is basically that AI performs better when you arrange it in an agentic way. For example, having five AIs, one does the title, one does the hook, one does the thumbnail, rather than having one do all of them. So I said this to say that this entire industry is extremely embryonic and it's not mature. When Usually, typically, when a new technology comes out, what we see at the beginning is fragmentation. There's no key player around whom most of the market consolidates. That is an excellent opportunity from your perspective. Now, if I come back up and, and draw down on this, for example, one of the reasons we don't have specialists is because the industry is quite mature. And herein lies, I think, a huge opportunity. And I explain the two subsections of specialist in a moment. But what would I mean by generalist? A generalist is somebody who is gonna say, hey, I will automate anything. I will automate your onboarding. I can automate a chatbot for you. I can automate a voice agent. They essentially are, I am an AI automator and I will automate things to deliver an outcome. I would say almost everybody fits into the generalist category at the moment. And oftentimes you can afford to be a generalist uh, from a marketing perspective, if you're generating organic inbound leads. For example, if you've got a killer Instagram page, TikTok or LinkedIn, and people say, hey, you, I'd love to, I want you to come and do stuff for me. And that enables you to have breadth. If you're marketing and want to grow it, one hack is a specialist route. In other words, that you go really niche on one specific thing. And when there's a thousand people saying, hey, I mean, a good example is if you could, for example, a lot of people talk about like SaaS, right? Or like, um, Social media marketing agency. There were so many of those. And that market, by the way, is very tiny compared to this. This eclipses that market. I'll, I'll pull a graph together for the next kind of chat that we have on um, on this topic, but it eclipses it to such, it's unbelievable. The point here is, um, is that you want to have a niche and be specific if you can, because that enables you to get way more clients. If everybody's saying, hey, I can do your Facebook ads, I can do your Instagram, I can tie your shoelaces, we'll do some SEO, we'll do this. Or are you gonna go to the guy that says, look, we only do Instagram ads. That's it, we don't know anything about YouTube, we don't know anything about, we just do Instagram. You go with a specialist, and it's also easy to buy. Now, the specialists fall into two categories in my experience now, in this kind of AI automation um, evolving market we've got. We've got the niche focused and the outcome focused. Now, I wanna start with niche focused. So, if you think about it like this, right, you could have uh, someone that focuses on a very specific section, like I just do voice, agents okay I, all i do is voice agents i am the voice agent guy i am the guy that will get you chat box you know what i'm saying you're really specific in a technology and that can cut across many sectors another way that you can be niche focused you can either niche down by technology or you can niche down 
by sector. For example, I just service the legal industry and I niche there because I know all of their problems. I know all the pain points. I know exactly what they want. I know exactly how the process works. Therefore, I am uniquely positioned to understand based on my technological experience, what they need. So when you're thinking about niching down, you can either niche down by technology or you can niche down by sector. Both of those are freaking superpowers. Nobody's doing it. I mean, like, I, it's really, really, really rare, which is why I'm so stoked to share this with you and explore in a bit more detail. Then we've got outcome focused. Now, these guys, you may not describe these people here um, as an AI automation agency, but they are scooping up so much of the freaking market. Well, the, the market's very undercapitalized. I mean, fractionally. I like, if you even think about, in fact, if I even pull this up, um, and I'll show you why we're on this YouTube channel in a second, right? But if I go technology adoption curve, check this out, right? I, did, I covered this in a different video. Oh my, I don't know if Brave's gonna give us the information that we need. Um, this is a really good example. Um, let me bring this over so you can have a look, okay? You have innovators 2.5% and everything's going over to the right, right? So at the moment with this, if we were to implement the current status quo of technology we have, this is a really important point for context and all the things we're gonna talk about today. It would take ages, like, but the thing is with all the new technologies that are coming out constantly, everything's getting pushed back over to the left. So even if you were to automate everything today, the new technology, the new, the new models, the new systems, the new ways of doing things, the new applications, keep pushing everything back to the left. That's code for very, very fast growing market, which is code for great news. So I started to say things are growing exponentially. Now, who are the outcome focused people? These are people, guys, who don't identify necessarily as an automation agency. What they identify as is I am an SEO specialist and I use the tools that are available to get you the result that you want. These guys are married to outcomes. These guys would be something like, um, I don't know, we provide you the CRM, so we help you manage your customer data. So on enterprise clients, for example, what's happening is basically they've already got existing technological providers who are adding AI into the existing solutions, Salesforce. So on a quest to build, it's like a million or a gazillion AI agents because they have the relationships, they already have the data and you're adding AI to that solution. Alternatively, I mean, SEO is a good example, right? Or maybe you're a conversion specialist. You're not an automation agency. What you are is you are married to an outcome. I help you get more customers. Does that sound pretty cool? Do you want more customers? All right, awesome. I'm Jack, I'm Sol, what did I sign, right? That's what they do. And then they're using the best available technologies, which may be AI, uh, maybe other things, to achieve that result. So they're not necessarily trying to solve, sell AI. AI is a tool to help them get to the outcome. So these guys are outcome focused. And the second that you'd say, well, AI doesn't help the result, they wouldn't be using it. Do you see what I'm saying? So they're more outcome focused. So this is vertical number one, the AI agency. I'm gonna zoom over now to vertical number two, which is content creation. Now we had Stephen Pope on this uh, channel uh, last week. What an ace conversation, he loves content creation with AI. So if you're interested in that stuff, he's a really great guy for that. Here we've got about enhancing the creation of content across platforms, automating data and creation. Now, when I think of content creation, where my mind goes with AI is that we will have, you know, it's basically gonna be ubiquitous at some point, indistinguishable if you just look at the power laws and how it's growing exponentially. David Shapiro talked about this a lot. He's, there's a lot of covers and some graphs. I'll try to put a link down below so you can check him out. But the TLDR of it for me is that when we're thinking about content creation and points of leverage, which ultimately, if you want to grow, you want to scale, we need to think about how we can get you leverage. You know, if you have like other people's time, other people's money, um, social media is a point of leverage, because if you create a really valuable digital asset, that can stay there forever. Like you do a really cool LinkedIn post, it's really valuable. People can consume that for weeks and months when you're doing something else, maybe you're drinking coffee. Now, on the content creation side, when I think about this, I actually think what it does is it has several different applications. And I'll give you an example. And this is why I had Liam Motley's YouTube channel up, right? Liam and myself now, these are AI generated images using Flux. In fact, I'm gonna do a video next on how you can capture a thumbnail and create you in that thumbnail uh, with literally one click of a button. Why is this cool? Because it's time consuming to create thumbnails and different reactions to different Scenarios. I probably put an AI generated thumbnail on this video just because of time savings. Now I can get the team um, that I'm building out to help with that stuff, which I think is really cool. So we start to get these really cool crisp technologies that can either help you build your social media following. And it isn't just thumbnail. I mean, thumbnail is just one really simple example. Like this is an image I did uh, on my last video. Funny side note, by the way, I did one and I looked at the image 
I like, they had like my, they made my arms like drain pipes. Like I was like, what have they, even this guy's, look at his arms, dude. I, that's why I go crop this out the image, dude. I've got to kind of be like, get it over here so you can't see. But I was like, dude, I need to retrain it. I need to like show off my gains or something. Because AI is, AI is disrespecting me right now. So we need to make sure that um, it's not running my gains. My PT was like, bro, they destroyed like months of progress, which is funny. But the point is that you can use the technology, right? For so many different applications and also data analytics, like feed it the data of, hey, I did 20 posts. Here are the outliers. Here are the blah, blah, blahs. How should I improve it? So AI is a function that helps you not only be so much more efficient, how you write your scripts, your hooks, analyzing the data, creating graphics. It basically means you can get 10x the work done if you're intelligent with applying yourself. So I say that to say that for the guys that get it, and by the way, most people don't get it. Like they really, really don't get it at all. Like the amount of competitive intelligence you can get scraping videos, scraping comment sections to generate ideas is absolutely outrageous and so underutilized. I mean, I create videos on this channel and I'm like, hey, Steeler, I did one that shows you how to Download, basically auto script the comments, auto script the transcript, and it will suggest videos to you. I showed you once how you could grab outliers, the top 100 videos on the planet that week for your area. And what it would do is basically say to you, hey, you've got these cool videos based on your channel. These are all versions of that video that you could do and it understands the context. Nobody's using this stuff. These are all sassies you can build, by the way, which is very neatly the third thing we're gonna talk about, which is coding. Again, another vertical of leverage. We talk about building an AI SaaS, a platform or services used by businesses or customers. Now, why is this not spoken about enough? Have you noticed? Have you noticed that most of the conversation is dominated by agencies? And I believe the strong reason for that is because if, I ha if you have an offer and you have a potential client and you have an automation you can sell, your journey from idea to sealing the deal is very short because it's a quick interaction. SaaSes, on the other hand, are Cruel mistresses, they will not give you anything for a long time. But here's the difference. When it does eventually take off, the rewards are freaking exponential. What is a great example of that? Well, a great example of that, think about it. School is a platform, right? Sam Ovens, really cool guy, founder of school. He invested in code. This probably wasn't very profitable to get started. But if you think about the number of businesses now that exist on school, Sam has a point of leverage now, has this cool epic thing that he can use now the code's been developed. I think he has like uh, coders from places like NASA. Like he spends, he has this joke that he used to want Lamborghinis, now really wants his coders because coders are really freaking expensive in the capacity that they work on for school. So this is an example of the SaaS, right? And it doesn't need to be as complex or as established as this, but never has, the, has it been so easy to develop if you, from an idea to execution. And just for context, I had a startup before I entered this space that did really well and I enjoyed it. And I bought a technical co-founder on uh, that I gave sweat equity to. If I were to rebuild a business like that from today, I wouldn't need to do that because of how far AI has come. Just let that sink. And it's also like the opportunity landscape from an idea that you've got to executing has never been like so vast or incredible. And people aren't really capitalizing on this because it takes time. And I think there's a time delay between um, the technology coming out and people are being emboldened with their ideas for actually reaching like a full maturation thing. So I think there's actually probably several hundreds, if not thousands of thousands of these businesses that are not actually mass market yet that will eventually be mass market simply because of the time delay that we have. And you know, here's just some example, you've probably seen so many softwares before, like Curse or Livable Bolt. I've done videos on things like this on the channel. You can check them out. So SaaS, I think is a long burn. I mean, it's something that I think is incredibly fun, incredible freaking fun and very scalable. Now, what's number four? Number four is, employment. And can you see this little creeping box? I'm going to bring this guy over here. I can't reveal what this one is just yet. I'm going to bring him over here and we'll come back to him in a second. What do we mean when we say employment? Entering the AI ecosystem within a larger organization to improve their business or research. Um, this one isn't talked about very, very often. And when we talk about employment in this context, like one of my friends from college is an AI researcher. He did a PhD in AI and now he works in various different AI organizations. But actually, you don't have to be self-employed or own a business. I mean, you might remember Robert Kiyosaki's Quadrant. I wonder if I can find that for you because it's a really interesting framework, actually. Um, Kiyosaki, I think it's like Quadrant that he did. Yeah, so it's basically like the different ways that you can generate income. It's very, very cool, right? So check this out. You have uh, these two things over here, right? You have, in this vertical, employee, self-employed. The idea of that vertical is that it's capped. 
and you're supposed to go boom, 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 boom. Basically, business owner, you're an assistant, people work for you. You get like infinite leverage on the right hand side and limited leverage on the left hand side, which is really interesting. But we spend a lot of time talking about business owner and self employed. Uh, but employee is a vertical that you have to actually physically address and talk about. So for instance, if I come over to, I just, I'll even show you now, right? I'm on Total Jobs, which is a website in the UK. I'm not a big fan of this phantasmagoric background, uh, but look, Prompt Engineering London, check this out. Associate Gen I Digital Product Management, London, American Express, competitive salary. We don't know what the number is, but it's competitive. You know, we've got machine learning engineers going around a hundred thousand pounds lots of different subs. It actually really frustrates me when they don't tell you what the, the salary is. But th this is all to say, guys, like there's different levels and different AI roles that you can go into. Copywriting agencies, um, prompt, you know, there's a million different things that you can go and have a look at. Some may require backgrounds and research and others will just be entry level. You can demonstrate your expertise in advance and approach them in the same way. But I said that to say that employment as itself is a way that you can make money and prompt engineering is a viable skill set. I will also say though that the direction of travel that we have with language models is such to make prompt engineering irrelevant. Like if you think about the growth and exponentiality of AI, um, it should consistently kind of get it what it is that you want over time. So we don't have to use prompt engineering hacks so much anymore as that is a failure that is happening earlier in the system with the AI. Now I started to say there are millions of employment opportunities with AI either within an organization. When I was at the Make conference, uh, there's a very large organization that have a team, actually a Make team, in the business of like three people. And their job is to basically consult within the organization about, hey, what are your biggest processes? How much money and time is this costing us? And then they basically sell to that business internally. So that's like a job uh, within an organization. So I wanted to cover this just in terms of being complete. And then I kind of, now we've done that. Let's just, let's zoom back up. The AI agency, content creation, coding, employment. And then it brings us nicely onto number five. Now, when I talk about number five, the reason I've, I've listed number five is number five isn't a vertical. Number five is a skill. And I kind of really want to drill down to because if you don't do this one, I feel that your chance of success with the others is going to be less. And that's just based on my seven or eight years of experience doing this and speaking to thousands of people about it. And that's two parts. Number one is focus. And the second one is resilience. And I, it sounds quite straightforward, but I think these two are absolutely critical. I did a video, I'll put a link to it on screen somewhere about shiny object syndrome. If you haven't seen that, please go check that one out because you'll find that very valuable. But the bottom line is in AI, there is no limit of opportunities or ways that you could generate an income, fabulous income doing many different things. And you can do any one of them, but you cannot do all of them. The biggest mistake I see people make is they try to do 15 different things at the exact same time. Your ability to pick one of these verticals and a niche within those verticals and doing it properly. Like I, I pulled together this framework because it was one of the most requested things I had in the community, uh, which is this one here, which essentially is where do you start? How do I, where do I begin? What do I do next? How do I go? And in this, I make the point actually about you picking one growing market and one offer for one customer that will absolutely freaking love it and scale that up because it's so easy to see all these different ideas and get distracted by those things. In reality, your, your ability to focus on one thing and deny other quality opportunities, in my experience, has really helped me um, go from where I was to exactly where I wanted to be. And the second bit about resilience is really important. Anybody who's ever done a business before always respects somebody who's trying because they know what it takes and the grind you have to put in. And it's sometimes like there's a deal coming down the line. And I shared this story in the last video, but it was this idea like, you know, we're going to turn this on and you're going to be making 20K a month. It's going to be amazing. And then it all freaking works or there's crazy things are happening. That is just the nature of it. And your ability to be committed and think long term about, look, I am going to be committed to building this SaaS for 10 years. I'm going to find, I know it's a problem. I validate that with the audience. I know they want the value. And if it takes me five years, 10 years, I will do it. Your ability to keep focused and work long term will really achieve, you know, improve your chances of success. But in case guys, I thought you found this video helpful. Check out this video somewhere on screen to check out the shiny objects and vendor. It's a shiny objects and Oh my goodness. How many coffees have I had today? I think you find that one helpful. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you in the next one.